The Windows subsystem for Linux has a new update, and in today's video, we're going to be showing all of the new features available in this release. Uh, this release is focused on adding experimental features to WSL. So we wanted to be able to give you fast, new paced features that you can try out while still being able to turn them off if you'd like to, so you can have a dependable environment to run all of your Linux programs on Windows. Let's jump into it. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is actually grab this update. And to do that, all you need to do is run WSL dash dash update. That'll just make sure that you're on the store version of WSL with all the latest. And then you're gonna run WSL dash dash update dash dash pre dash release. And then this will make sure that you are using the latest pre-release version as this latest release as of making this video is pre-release only. So once you've run those and you're on the latest version, uh, all you need to do is go to your Windows user home directory. So that would be just your username under users and run code.wslconfig or whatever editor of your choice. This is gonna create a .wslconfig file and you're going to add some content to it. So you might have seen this before. We use this .wslconfig file to set settings in WSL, like the amount of memory available to the VM. We've also added, as part of this update, a new experimental option here. So this, under this experimental header, you can set settings. Um, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is auto memory reclaim. And I've set this to gradual. What this allows us to do is automatically reclaim memory from Linux and so that your VM, your WSL VM as you're using it, will shrink in memory size when it's not in use. So how does this actually work? Well, we can take a look right here. So I am here inside of WSL. I've been running a bunch of commands, in this case, npm install. And what you'll notice is that the amount of memory for WSL on Windows is here. It's about four and a half gigabytes and that's seen by the VMM WSL process. Why that is, is because we have a buffer or cache memory of 2.8 gigabytes. So what that means is when you act, when you run files, when you run processes that access files in Linux, we take that file and we cache it. We take those pages and we cache them. Uh, this is great because we're using free memory uh, to make sure that all your processes and accessing that file again is faster. But in WSL, uh, right now, this holds on to this cache, which means as of today, WSL would stay around this many gigabytes on your machine. We have added the ability now, when you turn on this auto memory reclaim feature, that to make this slowly go down over time. So what we do is we detect that you're idle just based off your CPU usage, and then we slowly release that memory. So you can see we're intelligently releasing that buffer and cache memory. How we're doing that is we are using a new feature um, as part of the uh, Linux kernel. And it is located here, C group unified. It is a C group V2 feature and it is called memory.reclaim. This allows us to reclaim a small amount of memory when we detect your idle. And so in this case, if you're on dmessage, you can see that we're freeing this memory. I'm gonna go grab a cup of tea and we can watch how this is actually lowering the amount of memory that WSL is consuming over time while I'm idle on my machine. Ooh, it's hot. Uh, just made that cup of tea and you can see over time that that amount of memory present in Windows for WSL has lowered as we're lowering the amount of cache memory. So we plan this so that over about 30 minutes you should lower all the way down to a minimum amount of memory while keeping one gigabytes of cache memory. This gives us the best balance between performance and um, memory usage. And so if you wanna customize that, you can, please check out the blog below for those details. Let's chat about the second feature, which is sparse VHDs. This allows you to automatically shrink your WSL distros in disk size as you use them. So again, all you gotta do is run code.wslconfig or notepad or whatever editor you like to open up that .wslconfig file. And you're going to set a sparse VHD equals true under experimental to enable this. This will make any new distro you have set as a sparse VHD. And you can also run WSL manage, the distro name that you would like, and set sparse to true to do that for existing distros. 
Um, if you spell it manage correctly, then it works a lot better. And so that VHD is in use, which is why I'm getting that error. You only need to run it when you're not using WSL. And this is what it actually looks like. So I've gone into WSL and I'm running uh, a bunch of different things. So I've ended up running a Docker container and I built a lot of these images and I'm using a lot of disk space. And so what I wanna show you is before I go and do anything, I have about 278 gigabytes free on my disk. And then what I'm gonna do is run docker system prune uh, dash dash all. This is going to just remove all images and all stopped containers on my machine and give me a lot of disk space back normally on Linux. Before Sparse VHD, this one automatically give you the disk space back on Windows. But now that I have Sparse VHD, when I go ahead and run this, I automatically get that disk space back. So if you go ahead and set that Sparse VHD setting and, or use WSL Manage to set it for existing distros, that will allow your WSL VHDs to grow and shrink as you use them, maximizing the amount of disk space you have on Windows. For this next feature, I've jumped to a different machine, but the setup is the same. You just go to that .wsl config file, and then this time you're going to add networking mode equals mirrored. This is an entirely new networking mode inside of WSL. It completely changes the architecture, and its goal is to add improved compatibility for better networking performance and connectivity, and to add new features that you've been asking for. So what does it look like and how does it actually work? Well, the first thing that we're gonna do is jump to Linux, and we're gonna run ipconfig.exe, and this is just gonna output our IP address information of what's happening in Windows. And what you'll notice is that my IP address, my local IP address is 192.168.1.163. And if I go and run IP adder inside of my Linux instance, it also runs the same information in Linux. You'll notice it's exactly the same. What we've actually done is made it possible to mirror all of the network interfaces that are in Windows into your Linux subsystem. This gives you a lot of benefits. One of the first that we'll talk about is the ability to run IPv6. So this now means that you can access IPv6 workflows, full IPv6 support inside of WSL when you're using this mode. On top of that, we have other really cool um, abilities that this adds. So I can go ahead and run a, a HTTP server inside of Windows. I'm gonna run on port 9000 and I'm going to go inside of WSL. Nowadays, you wouldn't be able to connect with this without using the IP address of your Windows host, but with networking mode set to mirrored, you can access this using the local host address, so the local loopback address. So I can run curl just to 127.0.0.1, and that accesses that on Windows. So this should make accessing your files and servers, both across Windows and Linux, a whole lot easier. And the last feature that I'm going to showcase is the ability to actually connect to these experiences using devices on your local area network. So I've just made a um, simple server and I can see on my network that it's at 192, my, my IP address from before, and I can actually connect to that on my phone. And so I'm connecting to that exact server that I'm running here, and I can actually take a look here and debug what or experience what that is on my phone. This could be really useful for maybe you're making a website and you wanna to connect to it and see what it looks like on a phone. You can now do that directly in WSL without having to do any additional work like you would have had to before. So those are just some of the features that mirrored mode enables. Uh, you can read the blog post for full details and we encourage you to please try it out and give us your feedback on what you think of this new networking mode. This next feature is another networking feature called Hyper-V Firewall. To enable it, you go back to that .wsl config file and you're just gonna set firewall equals true. And what you're gonna see is that when you turn this on, all of the Windows firewall rules that you've set in Windows now automatically apply and are enforced inside of your WSL2 distros to your WSL VM. So what does this look like in practice? Well, I have just set a new firewall rule that blocks all networking connection on my machine. When I go ahead and try to access the website, you can see it's blocked on Windows. Now, before this feature, I could go and access the web just as I'd want inside of WSL because the Windows firewall rules wouldn't affect my WSL2 distros. But now with this feature enabled, when I try to refresh and access this page, you can see that all connections are completely blocked. 
And so in this way, we made it that your machine on Windows is more integrated with your WSL VM, so they all feel exactly the same and increase security for you. And the last two features that we're gonna talk about today are both in .WSL config, and that is DNS tunneling and auto proxy. Both of these features are networking based features that do a lot of work behind the scenes. They're a little bit harder to demo, so I'm just going to be explaining what they do here. The first is DNS tunneling. And so DNS stands for domain name server. It's how we translate things from bing.com to an actual IP address to connect to. Right now, WSL grabs that information by sending a networking packet to the Windows host. Sometimes this can get blocked by things like firewall rules or networking settings, etc. And when we turn DNS tunneling on, we actually make use of a virtualization feature to talk directly to Windows to grab that DNS information. What this means is that it should improve network compatibility and network connectivity. If you're having problems using a VPN or something like that or firewall rules, uh, turning this on should improve the chances that when you start WSL, you'll have the exact same networking connectivity as you would inside of Windows. And the next feature, auto proxy, is a very similar idea. In this case, it's talking about proxies, which allow you to communicate through networking through another server. And when you have this set up on Windows today, you would have to actually set that up manually in WSL as well. Uh, making auto proxy on or set to true, that allows WSL to use the same virtualization technique to grab the proxy information directly from Windows and set that up for you. So turning these features on will increase your network compatibility and make it much more likely that you'll have a smooth networking experience while using WSL. And those are all the features that we've added in this latest release. And I just wanna go over where they are actually available as some of these features have dependencies on certain Windows versions. And so in this case, auto memory and sparse VHD are both available on Windows 10 and Windows 11. Networking mode is available on insiders only right now. Uh, and so if you join and use the Windows Insiders program and you join any channel, including release preview, you'll have access to networking mode. Uh, same with firewall, it's insiders only right now. Uh, and same with DNS tunneling, insiders only right now. And then lastly, um, Win 11 20H2. So auto proxy is available on the latest Windows 11 version. Uh, these networking features, because they're based in the networking stack, do have Windows dependencies. If you try to set these up on your machine, you will just get an error message that it's not supported. If you see that, please try to upgrade your Windows version. All of these features are going to be coming to Windows 11 20H2, which is the latest Windows 11 version. Thank you for tuning in. We really hope that you try these features and let us know what you think of them. So to do that, the best way is to go to github.com slash Microsoft slash WSL. If you have a problem or have a feature request, you can file it there. Um, otherwise, you can reach me at Twitter at Craig A. Lowen and give us feedback there as well. Thank you very much and happy coding.